What's up? I want to talk to you about the Charleston real estate market. Over 1,600 of the 2,800 homes for sale have been sitting there for longer than a month. And of those 1,600, the median is 65 days. Also, it is taking a median two a months a for a lot of these homes to sell. My name is Brandon Bott. I work for Remax here in Charleston. Um, and I can tell you over the last 10 years uh, of doing real estate in Charleston, it's it's gone up, it's started to hover at the same place, and then it's gone down a little bit. And then obviously when COVID happened, like the rest of the country, Charleston was one of the, the main places, or South Carolina in general, was one of the main places that a lot of buyers were moving to. In 2021, 2022, and now, we've seen a, about a 43% increase in home values over the whole local country that's all over the low country so that's just in the last couple of years and then as of about six months ago when you know the interest rates started rising we saw home prices start to stabilize inventory start to rise and here we are in March of 2023 and right now we have about 2400 active listings on in our market a healthy real estate market here is anywhere from six to seven thousand active listings at any time uh, so you can see that even even now with uh, with the way of the things that change and the rates have changed and not as much activity going on we're still relatively have a very limited amount of supply and demand is demand is still pretty good um, as you can see the, the inventory isn't going up a crazy amount home values in general are again they're slightly ticking up really depending on the area so what we have in our market we have a ton of new construction in our market and that's been going on for years now really starting in the Mount Pleasant area Somerville and now what we've seen is a ton of new construction and John Island, West Ashley, Goose Creek, Monk's Corner, pretty much every area you're, you're seeing a ton of new construction. And what that does is for older existing homes, it doesn't necessarily hurt them, but it makes their home a little bit harder to sell. Now there's things that we can do marketing wise that can make your property way more attractive than new construction. But in general terms, it definitely makes it a little bit harder for homes to sell that aren't brand new. They don't have the shiny new finishes like new construction. And also six months ago, what happened Happened was when the rates start to change a lot of the builders around here just started dumping off their inventory prime example I had a buyer client in Johns Island that the home was listed when they started put it on the market this is a new construction home it was a neighborhood called Sea Island Preserve they listed the home for 600 when they when they originally listed it three months down the road we ended up getting that same house under contract for 480,000 480,000 versus 600 what 120 thousand dollar difference so as you can see See, things changed a lot. Not only did they get it for $120,000 less than what it was originally listed, they also kicked in another $10,000 worth of closing costs and another $5,000 worth of incentives for them. So that's a prime example of just how the market has switched um, just in a quick short six months. And not to mention that, but what we've also started to see in the market is in the upper price range, homes are definitely sitting a lot longer than they were six months to a year to two years ago. People are coming here from up north, out west, all over the place. And they were paying, you know, they were paying a ton of property taxes in the north or up north and out west. And they're coming here and they're paying one eighth of the property taxes. So what happened was they were paying $100,000 over asking price cash, no appraisal, no inspection, the list goes on and they still feel like they were getting a deal. Where I think the market is going to go over the next couple years, obviously this is always hypothetical and things change, but right now what I really expect is for inventory to creep back up. Um, I think we'll get back up to around four to 5,000, maybe a little more. I think there's going to be a ton more opportunities for buyers. And I think that even if you are selling a house, you're still going to have a ton of demand. Um, as long as you price a house aggressively, you price it properly, you do the right marketing to get as much exposure as possible, then you still have obviously a great chance to get your home sold. So all in all, we're still in a really good market in Charleston. It's it's uh, it's easier for buyers now. Uh, it's not as easy as it was four or five years ago, of course, but it's a much easier right now to find homes. You're able to negotiate and get closing costs. You're not having to pay twenty dollars to $100,000 over asking price. And you have a ton more leverage. For a seller, if you don't price it properly, if you're not aggressive and you don't have the right marketing behind you, then there's a good chance that your home can sit on the market um, and collect days on market. Anywhere from, I guess every market is different. If a home sits on the market for 60 days, is, is that really that bad? I don't, I don't think so. Now the goal is obviously always to sell it sooner rather than later, but before COVID, before 
the market really took off, there was times where houses were sitting for six months if they weren't priced right. So you can see that you can see that the market has changed a ton. But I do think that we're heading back to a more stabilized market. We're already on the way there. And I think over the next few years, we're going to continue to get to a more stabilized market where it's more even on the buyer side as it is on the seller side. I hope this information helps. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me at Sold by Bot or you can go to my uh, personal website at searchmountpleasanthomes.com and, um, and let me know how I can help you.